So good morning everybody, welcome back to another film. So I finally managed to get out of my field, or the, the two fields that I've been working in for the last three videos. That little field and the adjacent land has provided me with some really great material for the last three films. But I want to build on the last film that I did today, which was the tips on macro photography. Um, I've come to a little nature reserve not far from where I live and uh, it's a beautiful morning, the sun is just about to peep up over the houses that are behind me. So the last film that I did, all about the macro tips, generally was using all the stock photos that I've built up over many many years. So I thought I'd come out this morning and just give those tips a go whilst out on a real time session. Um, the nature reserve that I've come to ordinarily is um, a little species rich wildflower meadow um, but because of the lockdown I am a little bit late and I've missed quite a few of the things that I would normally photograph here but um, I'm confident that we'll find something and uh, hopefully my plan is not to move off from this area to get further shots but to try and do them all in this one small area. Now this, like I said, is a species rich wildflower meadow there's a little bit of a woodland um, just over there and there's two small ponds, one on that side and one on that side so let's see what we can find. So I'm going to do this in no particular order. The sun, like I say, is just peeping over those houses. So at the moment, because of its low angle, there's no shortage of backlit subjects. Just look at all that beautiful meadow foxtail with all the lovely light shining through the flowering heads. Over here, we've got yellow irises. But I'm not just, just going to jump on anything, I've got to find a good composition. That's still a key important thing when you're shooting anything. So um, spend a bit of time just looking for something that's really suitable for the lens. So I've already got the first one out of the way, which is using my tripod. That was one of my um, first tips of the, of the last video. As I walk around when I talked about at the beginning these foxtails, they look really lovely and when I get down low they really stand out beautifully. Foxtails have got these little pointy things that stand out at the sides and the top of the flower head. These are the awns and they attach to the actual flowers themselves. Now they're picking up beautifully in that backlit, in that lovely backlighting coming from the sunshine. So I've got down nice and low and I'm shooting through a huge amount of them. Um, but I've chosen f4 as a very shallow depth of field and I've done that because I want everything behind the point of focus and everything in front of the point of focus to become soft and what that's creating is these lovely speckled highlights of soft uh, areas of interest all around the, the foxtail parts of the image that's sharp. I've deliberately underexposed by one stop because what's critical with backlighting is that all the areas that are lit by the sunshine or lit by the, the light portions of the image are correctly exposed. So I've underexposed by one stop. 100 ISO, f4, 320 per second. Last thing and crucially is to shield, because the sun's so low, is to shield the lens just ever so slightly because I don't want the light hitting that front element and all that light bouncing around inside causing blur. So here we go, shot number one. really So I've come into the woodland and I'm trying to do a shot that involves going in really close. Out in the meadow I was struggling a little bit, um, I tried various things with irises, uh, oxide daisies, but the problem is when you're going really close, and I mean really close, is that all the imperfections on your subject matter really stand out. So things like where you've got petals and people have br brushed past them, they tend to get marked and scuffed. Butterfly wings for example, as butterflies get older and um, towards the end of the summer season all the little gossamer scales that you get on the wings tend to get tatty and damaged and sometimes you get big chunks missing out of the wings themselves so 
Thank you, Mr. Pheasant. So what I've found here is a plant that I was really least expecting to photograph this morning. And this is a plant called tufted hergrass. Now at the base, if you hold um, your hand on top and press up and down, it actually feels really tufty and sharp to the touch. It's very, very coarse grass, but growing up from that, these panicles at the top, you get these lovely draping seed heads. Now, to be fair, a lot of the actual flowers aren't open, but what I have found is that when I look and I go in close, there's some lovely nice details and shapes where the, where the, the panicles is drooping over and, and, and the, the stems uh, which hold the flowers are just creating these nice interesting lines. The background for the image, I've got the canopy and I'm actually using the highlights coming through the canopy. Now, as landscape photographers, the highlights in the canopy is something we avoid like the plague. But here at such a narrow depth of field, they're creating these lovely big wide spots and I, I've used a, a wide aperture to get that effect. If I stop down those spots become smaller and smaller and they, put, they become real distractions but at f4 they really expand out and they create these lovely patches of light to sort of help to separate and make the, the actual flower head stand out. This is one of those shots where it may or may not work. It looks really nice on the back of the camera. I'm quite happy with it. Finding a composition that works is the difficult thing. I've moved in and out, side to side, and often when you find something freehand, you just can't find it again when you want to set the tripod up. Now, because this is such um, a critical point of focus that I'm trying to find, I've actually found, found the spot that I want on the tripod because there's just no way I'd be able to find it again, hand holding. And because we're in the woods, um, it's quite dark in here, I can't get the shutter speeds that I want. I don't, I could if I went above 1600 ISO, but I don't really want to do that. So it's nice and still in here. So I'm going for 100 ISO, F4, and I'm on a 30th of a second. I'll put that on now. So I found my next image and this is the one that illustrates dynamic lines. Now some of you might argue that this particular shot is a shot of two halves but I feel it illustrates the dynamic line point of view really well. What I've got is a little plant called a Herb Robert. It loves dark shady woodlands and you can find it all over at this time of year right in the middle of May. Quite common and it's generally along the edges of the woodland paths. It likes a bit of light but primarily it's within dense woodlands. I've got two flower heads and I've arranged them, one at the top right of the frame, one at the bottom left, so you've got a strong diagonal. <laughs> they didn't see me set this tripod up for, for reasons that they are a little bit complicated when you've not used them for a long while, as I haven't. I've, I've used it very, very occasionally um, since I got my new Gitsaw tripod a few years ago. They have been <laughs> sort of criticised in how difficult they are to put up. But once they are up, they're really very user friendly. It's just that when you're trying to get the legs into place, it's, it's often been described as trying to wrestle with a set of bagpipes, and it, it really is exactly that. But going back to the shot, um, because I'm at close focusing distance, I'm having a little bit of an issue with depth of field. I've tried various apertures, and I want, what I want to do in this instance is get both of the flowers nice and sharp. I don't want one falling out because it's a bit too close to the other to really get away with that but it's also so close that I want to try and get the whole thing sharp front to back. Now I've tried F22, I've tried F16, I've tried F8, and I can't really get what I want. At the smaller apertures, um, where you get a lot of depth of field, what I'm tending to find is that I'm getting the background, background distractions really causing problems. When I stop down to F4 and F5.6, it's much nicer but I can't get the whole thing sharp. So what I'm gonna do in this instance is, well, I've actually taken the shot. I did a focus stack, and I started the stack by focusing on the first um, stamen of the nearest flower head, and then I took a series of images, just refocusing, just, uh, just in the fo focusing ever so slightly, just throughout the whole scene. And that way I can keep control of that background a lot better. 
you never really know with focus stacking until you get it onto the computer whether it's going to work because what tends to happen is you move the focusing ring the size of the image can change ever so slightly it can shift so what I'll do is I'll, I'll show the one at f22 so you can see the background distra distractions but I'll also put the focus stack on assuming it's going to work um, you do it in Photoshop you auto align the layers and you can auto stack the image as well so the so Photoshop takes in, into consideration only the sharp portions of the image and stacks them all together and erases the other portions of the frame very very good when it works so I'll put that on now So for this image, I'm killing two birds with one stone. I've got down low and I'm hand holding. Now, to get down low was always going to be a problem for me today because the grass is really well up in most places where the plants are growing. So using that soft out to focus base that I talked about in the last video is, is quite difficult, certainly in this locality. So I'm taking it one step further and what I'm doing, I'm using the long grass to focus through onto a subject and I'm using so the softening effect that I've talked about at the base of the image but actually in all aspects of the image to the sides and um, to the base as well so I'm really poking my lens in nice and tight in amongst that vegetation and in this instance I'm photographing on one single flower which is a creeping buttercup and I'm just aligning the composition as cleanly as I can but one of the most important parts of trying to get this right is I don't want the stem to just cut off abruptly at the base. If you think back to last week's video, I'll put a link above, um, the base of the flowers always came out of a nice soft uh, out of focus part of, the, part of the frame and I'm trying to do that with the stem of the buttercup. It's not easy but if I just get into the right angle and just align myself carefully I can just get a blade of grass just in the right place to create that out of focus base. And it looks really, really nice. And I've even got a couple of bits of grass with dew on top that's just catching the light. like the Arctic, it's so warm now, it's quite cold when I set off out this morning. I'm going to spend the next 10-15 minutes just enjoying that sun and a bit of freedom for once. So the images I've taken this morning I think I'm fairly happy with and um, they look good on the back of the camera and they've certainly tested some of those techniques that I showed you in last week's video such as getting down low, hand holding, using diagonal lines and also backlighting for example done all that in one session so that's been a really good really good morning assuming the images come out all right so just quickly housekeeping the channel is approaching 10,000 subscribers which is absolutely fantastic it's mind-blowing it's been a long time getting there but we're getting there 
What I will say, I've just been looking at the analytics just recently, and out of those 10,000 or nearly 10,000 people, only 1,500 have got the bell rung. So 8,500 people are missing out on new videos as and when they're uploaded. So please ring that bell for those notifications. It makes a huge difference to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, leave some comments below. Give me a big thumbs up if you've liked it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.